Welcome back to WebCamps TV Live here at Comash 2011. Thanks for joining us. We've been talking with some of the industry leaders out there on web development, and I'm glad to be joined by Nils Hartwig from Umbraco again. And we're going to talk a bit about Umbraco in depth, building on the conversation we had in the panel. Now, to start off with, you've traveled a long way for this conference, haven't you, Nils? Where do you come from? Uh, I come from uh, Copenhagen, uh, Denmark. Okay. Which is, is a country about the size of this venue. <laughs> it's so. well, like a water park, you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Maybe you're used to the kind of climate here. I mean, it's uh, just for people who aren't familiar with the, the climate in Ohio in January, it's very cold and there's a lot of snow. Yeah. Uh, were, you used to, were you shocked by the, uh, the climate here when you arrived? No, I, I feel at home. You feel at home? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Well, we're glad to welcome you here. Um, let's talk about some of the goals you've got for the next version of Umbraco and what you see as being really important to your users and your developers? Um, so, in the, the version coming up in, in June or, or the version we just released? The version you just released. So what were some of the, the design goals behind that? I, I, there's, uh, there was two things. Um, so it's not a major version, it's a, it's a point 0.1 release. So it used to be uh, 4.5, now it's 4.6. Um, but th but there was a, the major design goal was that so Umbraga is used on uh, more than 85,000 websites, including some like really insanely big brands like uh, Heinz.com and Hershey's.com, wow. uh, the Davis Cup site. And, and all these big sites are using the platform. Uh, but what could be really interesting is why, why shouldn't uh, much smaller sites use this, uh, this platform? And it's been, uh, let's just be uh, completely honest, it's been, a, <laughs> there's been some of a, a learning curve and, and yeah. you, haven't gotten much help when you installed Umbraco. Okay. So the, the, the very first design goal with, uh, with 4.6 or Juno, as the code name is, um, has been to, to make it easier to install, uh, to be able to have um, pre-installed functionality. Uh, so uh, during the install process, um, you've been asked, do you want a, a sample site, which could be uh, either like a really simple uh, standard site, a uh, blog, a personal side with a gallery, a business side with news, um, contact forms, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we made a skinning engine on top of that where, where we got some uh, uh, kick-ass design agencies to make some really beautiful skins for us. Excellent. So we got some really professional looking skins. And those skins can have placeholders. So, so you install them, Brocker, you say, yeah, I want a business side looking like this, but then I can click one button and you got a color palette and you can just change colors in mm -hmm. the skins. Um, so even though we don't have like thousands of skins like uh, WordPress have, it's very configurable skin. Right. Um, so that was one thing. And, and then the other was, uh, was uh, supporting Razor because it's just heaven sent. Why uh, do you say that? What do you like about Razor so much? Um, be because anyone can pick it up. I mean, anyone who can do HTML can pick up Razor. It's, it's fluent uh, in, the, in the sense that you can just, you can just understand what's going on. Uh, so uh, earlier, you have, you've either been forced to make your own .NET controls, or you can use uh, a, a transformation language called XLT, mm -hmm. which some people love, some people find <laughs> Do maybe just a little bit uh, annoying to write. Um, and, but the, the, the thing is with, with race, it's just, it, it's so remarkable, beautiful when you look at the code. So you can do for each va uh, uh, photo in model.children mm -hmm. and then just do an uh, unordered list and just say uh, photo dot, um, uh, image path, for instance. I mean, it's, it's, you really, you really have no doubts of what's going on. Yep. Um, so supporting that uh, and then make it really nicely integrated with the whole web matrix experience was, was like, if we can have this, we got this really, really awesome platform um, that really deserves more traction. Uh, but in order to get that, people need to have a really great uh, first time experience. Right. And, and World Matrix must help there. Definitely. Like that stepping stone to actually getting deployed and installed. Right? If you just, if you think, uh, just five years back, what it took to, to, to build websites. Today you go to uh, microsoft.com slash web, click a green button, and you press yes a couple of times, boom, you got web matrix. Then you go into uh, web matrix saying, create new project based on gallery. You click an Umbrago icon, you click yes a couple of more times, and boom, you got a website. Yep. 
and then you, you click a button, it's up running, and you got this new Umbrago installer experience. You just say, oh, yeah, I would like a business side, I would like this skin, but my logo is green, so I'm just gonna change the background a little. Once that's done, you can click another button in WebMatrix and say deploy, and it says, oh, what's your host? I don't know. And then you click another button and you say, oh, that host looks nice and cheap. Yep. And there you go. <laughs> then you get a, then you get a, I'm also about to say, fucking email and, and, <laughs> and with, with the hosting information. I knew I'd have to beep you out. <laughs> uh, sorry, it's live. I'm European. I'm allowed to do that. Um, and and then, then, uh, then it's actually deployed. It's, it's, it's like nuts. Um, uh, and it's, uh, I think it's uh, one of the, uh, you, can, you can tell it, it really excites me because it's, it's the feeling when you build this product that relies on so many components in the Microsoft uh, infrastructure, yeah, and I mean, our forum used to be polluted by questions of people who needed to configure SQL Server, and then Web Gallery came, and a ton of those questions disappeared, and now you get Web Matrix. So even so we can monitor the success of what we're doing by the number of questions that we're not getting on your forums, almost. Yeah, I I, I talked to uh, I think it was Bill Stables. I mentioned this. I said, I mean, we can literally. <laughs> Uh, we had a, so Umbraga, the, the forum activity on, on the Umbraga forum has just been climbing and then all of a sudden there was like a tiny decline mm -hmm. uh, and we actually realized that you could tell that that was uh, when the web gallery uh, was launched right. and we changed our default download. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Some questions from Twitter because uh, Twitter's yeah. lighting up. If you've got questions for Niels, then hit up at webcamps and type in your question and we'll pot it, pop it up here um, soon. So a question for you, um, and this relates back to your big customers that you mentioned earlier on. How large can you scale Embraco? How big does it go? Uh, I, I mean, I have no clue. Uh, but, <laughs> but I mean, there's sites like uh, Davis Cup runs uh, on Embraco and perform perfectly during the Davis Cup finals. Um, so uh, big then? <laughs> yeah, Vogue. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would say uh, in terms of uh, traffic, probably infinite. Uh, it depends on your that's survey. A, that's a bold claim right there. Uh, well, we are, we are on Asia, right? <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh, but yeah, and in terms of content, Umbrow can handle about a quarter million pages. Very uh, cool. So it scales pretty big. Another question from Twitter for you. How will Razor impact how Umbraco uses XSLT? Is it complementary, supplementary, or an overhaul? <sighs> um, and you've got to answer this in a minute, by the way, because I've got another question for yeah, you. Yeah, okay, you sure. Um, I think it's uh, complementary. Uh, there's uh, people who likes XSLT, um, and you can do stuff in XSLT, in especially XPath, yep. uh, which is a Korean language, which you can't do in Razor. But I would say, I would assume that 80 to 90% of people who are new to Umbrago would definitely uh, prefer Razor over uh, XSLT. Okay, very good. Now, final question for you before we wrap up. The future of Joomla, looking at the June release, I think it is, that you've got coming yeah. up. What's going to be the big change there? Um, total uh, technical, uh, totally rewrite. Um, uh, uh, what's the foundation? What's yeah, the uh, uh, MVC, MVC3, okay. ASP.NET MVC3. Um, but yeah, the, it's, a, it's, it's a complete rewrite of Umbra. And why have you decided to use MVC3? What's been the, the reasons behind that? Well, instant love. I mean, it's <laughs> no, but I mean, NBC. Instant love M and fame. No, M NBC is like uh, is is like coming home. Uh -huh. uh, so I've, I've, I'm a web developer at heart. I've always done web development. Uh, got into web forms because all of a sudden you could do uh, a ton of cool stuff uh, in, on the on the .NET platform as opposed to classic SP and com objects. Uh, but I mean, I've never got used to web to the whole controls web form thing. Or oh, lack of control. <laughs> well, the 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 uh, .NET controls yeah, yeah. Um, idea, um, uh, and, and and MVC, it's just, I mean, I love it. Plus, I love it from a from a, like a, a more front end web development uh, uh, perspective. Because of that separation between yeah. and, the, and the views, yeah. Yeah, and the the software engineers in the core team loves it because of uh, the testing, um, and yeah, obviously the the cleanness, the uh, way it supports. Uh, uh, IOC, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. Uh, right. Now, apart from Razor, what's, what's your favorite feature in MVC3? I, I, I can't answer that. I mean, I mean, <laughs> okay. That would be, that would be uh, 
as, as I'm not the one driving uh, the, uh, the version 5 mm -hmm. development, I, I wouldn't be able to say that. I, I don't have my hands that. Uh, okay. I mean, I've spent. You mentioned that. IOC there, though. Yeah. That, that yeah. appeals. Well, but, but I mean, I've, uh, the, the past uh, long time, I've, I've tried to, uh, to uh, stop control and give it to some of the guys in the core team who are uh, real software engineers. I'm just like a happy coder, hacker kind of guy. Fantastic, Niels. Well, thanks so much for chatting to us today. It's great to have you on Webcamps TV Live here oh, at, Mo at Code Mash. Now, guys, we're going to take it back to Redmond, um, where we've got Bilal Aslam talking about the new publishing capabilities in WebMatrix. Hi everybody and welcome back to Webcamps TV. Today we're joined by Bilal Aslam who's going to talk to us about the new publishing capabilities in WebMatrix. Welcome Bilal. Um, just tell everybody at home who you are, what you do at Microsoft. Hi, uh, James and everybody who's watching. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm a program manager at Microsoft. I work on WebMatrix and also on WebDeploy. Well, let's dive into a demo without further ado. Knowing your love for cupcakes, I have actually created a site <laughs> called James Cupcakes. Very nice. So. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, let's just make sure it runs locally, looks good locally. All right, there we have I'm it. Getting hungry already. There we go. <laughs> so now uh, I'm very excited to show this to the world, and I want to show you how WebMatrix makes this really simple. Uh, so what I'm going to do is um, very briefly, let's take a quick look at what you would do if you wanted to find a web hosting provider. Uh, you just click uh, Find Web Hosting from within WebMatrix. And that will actually take you to a web page which has a rich gallery of web hosting providers. You can sort them, filter them by, filter them by price, by region, uh, by the type of server that you want. It's all there. Uh, but let's say I already signed up for a web hosting provider. Now, WebMatrix compatible web hosting providers will send you an email which contains a settings file. Now, this settings file contains all the information you need to publish your site either using FTP or using the preferred method which is web deploy. So let's see what happens. I just click publish. And this dialog comes up. Uh, uh, it looks a little scary. There are a lot of settings. But thanks to our web hosting provider partners, we have a settings file which we can import. So I'm now going to click Import Publish Settings. And I have saved my profile over here. It's, I, it's called Web Host Publish Settings. And there you go. Everything is just filled out automatically. That is autofill, but yep. for web matrix. I love it. Yep. So now what I do is I click Validate Connection. Notice that my site has an SDF database. It's just a file. Well, FTP can transfer that file. Let's make it more challenging by going to the Databases tab, clicking bakery.sdf. Let's migrate this to a local SQL Express server. So now this database, the database associated with this application, is no longer going to be a file. It's going to be an actual SQL database. So the tool handles all of this for me. I don't have to do any of the migration. There you go. It actually just took around a second. Wow. Um, now. If you were just using FTP or if you were using some other tool to transfer your database, you would need to jump through a few hoops. You need to script out your database, connect to the remote database, somehow run the script on the remote database. With WebMatrix, it's actually really simple. So let's go back in, import our settings, because remember, we had canceled out earlier. And notice that when I import my settings, my connection string is actually filled out. This is great because my SQL connection string is coming from the settings file. I don't have to figure out how to type out a connection string. Go, I'll just click on the connection string because I love this new little feature that we have in. Look at that. So you don't have to search through the long string. You can just type all the fields and out there in the dialog. It's nice. There you go. Uh, now what I can do is I can hit validate connection again. Now at this point, WebMatrix is actually connecting to the remote database. And it's actually making sure that you will be able to transfer this uh, database. Now it says connected successfully. Now let's save our settings. And now let's try to publish our site. Okay. This is one of my favorite features, personally. Uh, it's called Publish Compatibility. What co Publish Compatibility does behind the scenes is that it actually uploads a few test pages, with your permission, of course, to your site, which it will delete when it's done. And it makes sure that things like uh, the database is accessible. It makes sure that your ASP.NET version is correct. And if it's not, it actually switches the .NET version of your site remotely to make sure it's correct. So let's go ahead and hit Yes. Now we're going to WebMatrix is running these compatibility checks. And we can see it's checking your database. And it just takes a few moments. It's available. ASP.NET is available. It's working. And HTML is working. OK, so now at this point, let's hit Continue. Now what happens is that you see a preview of what you're going to actually transfer. 
so let's go ahead and hit continue and see what happens. Uh, now uh, you'll notice that progress is showing up at the bottom of the screen. Uh, at this point, the uh, transfer has started. It's just going to take as long as it needs to. Uh, pretty much depends on the connection with your host. And it's done. And it's done. <laughs> that was quick. So let's go ahead and see our fantastic new website. And there it is, James. Uh, as you can see, it's on. It's actually online. Excellent. There you go. That's publishing. Fantastic. So what are your top three things about publishing Webmatrix? Sure. Uh, so top three things are, uh, number one, we have a set of great web hosting provider partners who provide the best experience of Webmatrix. You can discover that from that list of hosting providers from within Webmatrix. Uh, number two, uh, getting publishing set up with Webmatrix is literally a two-step, actually a one-step process. Just import your settings. And number three, Web Matrix, especially when you're using Web Deploy from within Web Matrix to do your publishing, it transfers files, databases, security descriptors, pretty much everything that needs to make your application work. Very nice. So for more information and to download Web Matrix, just head to microsoft.com slash web and you'll be able to download Web Matrix. Bilal, thanks very much for spending the time. Thank you.